Hi there, I'm Michael Odie. I'm a SolarWinds contributor and president and CTO of Tekka Inc. And today we're going to talk about using the file stream data type. First, what are we going to cover? We're going to have an, an overview of SQL Server's blob support, uh, where it's been and how it's got to where it's at, and then we're going to dig in a little deeper about some of the advantages of using the file stream data type. Next, we're going to go to the actual details. I'll show you how the file stream data type is enabled. And then we're going to look at actually creating some databases and tables that use the file stream data type. Uh, back in the SQL Server 7 days, Microsoft introduced uh, a few different, uh, both for back then, new data types to deal with blob storage, the image, text, and end text data types. Um, it was probably just good that they worked, but they have limited sizes. They are limited to 2 gigabytes, and many blob objects are larger than that. There were some performance issues when using them. Uh, when you use these data types, uh, the data was processed through the SQL Server buffer pool, which limited uh, buffer pool size to other types of things that were running out there, and blobs tended to be pretty big. Next, there was a different programming model. You couldn't just use normal T-SQL to get them into the, the data in these data types. A lot of times you had to use an older ADO technique called chunking, or you process different bits at a time. So these were some problems, and the performance just wasn't the greatest with these. Back with SQL Server 2005, Microsoft introduced a var binary max data type. Um, it provided a consolidated programming model, but it still had size and performance limitations. So that's why with SQL Server 2008, Microsoft introduced the file stream data type. File streams are basically uh, the next generation in blob storage, and they address a lot of the problems that these earlier data types had. With the file stream data type, it was high performance because your blobs are stored in the file system, and so you didn't have that overhead and you didn't have that contention within SQL Server's buffer pool. You got as fast as access as you could get. Uh, pointers were then stored in the referencing rows, so that's what allows data integrity to be maintained between the blob objects themselves and the rows they're associated with. And of course, they have large support. So the NTFS file system supports uh, files of up to 16 terabytes in size. So that's a massive jump in uh, scalability. So between the scalability and the performance, the file stream data type really was a, a jump ahead for blob storage in SQL Server. But one of the best things about it is the high integration it offers. You get data consistency and durability. Because, for instance, if you perform a backup operation with the file stream data type, SQL Server knows those pointers out there and it will go find the related blob objects and it will back them right up with your, um, with your relational rows. So this keeps your blob objects and your relational data all in sync. So how do you enable file stream support? Well, you can do it when you install SQL Server. As you run through the SQL Server Installation Center, there is an option when you're configuring the relational database engine. There is a file stream tab. You can hop into there and enable it. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But if you haven't done that and you want to use blob storage in your, your SQL Server instance, um, you can fire up the SQL Server Configuration Manager, then Go to your SQL Server instance, right-click it, hit uh, Properties, and that'll bring up this Properties dialog that you can see here. There's a file stream tab here that's uh, much like the one you see in Installation Center. And if you want to go ahead and enable file stream support, be sure to check the boxes that say Enable File Stream for Transactional ac SQL Access. And if you want to access this file stream data from outside of SQL Server in Windows, you can say enable file stream for file I.O. access and then provide it a share name. And that share is going to be created when you do this. And if you need remote clients to access this, you check the bottom box too. After you've gone ahead and, and enabled file stream support, you then have to go ahead and restart the SQL Server service. So how do you go ahead and uh, create a, a database that's using this? Well, you use your standard create database command that you see here, giving it the name of your, uh, your primary file for your uh, data files, for your log files. But there's a primary difference here. And if you look at where the data file is created, 
um, you'll see there's a file group instance in there that says file group giving that file group a name and in this case I called it my file stream DBFS for file stream data data group and then there's that keyword that says contains file stream data and you tell it that file stream name that you're going to be using and that's basically it that will create a a new container out there for you and we'll have a look at what those containers look like in just a second when you go to use file stream data um, you need to use the create table command there's a few limitations about what a file stream table has to be like uh, first they always have to have an ID that um, is unique and is not null and so that's what you see here is this first column and then the actual uh, file stream data itself is in this FS blob column the last column you see here and it uses a var binary max file stream uh, keywords to indicate that the data stored there is going to the file stream. All right, that's a good overview. Let's have a quick look at what these things look like on a SQL Server system. Now let's dig into SQL Server Management Studio and we'll have a look at what the file stream data type looks like. So first, let's look at our instance. And if we go up here and look at properties and we go to advanced, you can see here that the file stream data type is enabled and it says it has full access enabled and there's a share created for it. So that's how we can check out that. Here's an example of creating the, the database that has a file stream data, data type in it and a table called my file stream data that contains a file stream data. Let's dig into those and you can see here's our database here and if we look into the database properties you'll see we can look into files and there's our file stream type our file stream data type where it's stored at and if we look over here into the file groups themselves you can see that we now have a primary file group and a file stream file group that's called my file stream and so if we go over to computer management remember there was a share created and if we go into shares there's our share with our MS SQL Server uh, type and um, the SQL Server file stream share shown under the description well that's the end of this presentation uh, come back for part two and you can see how you actually access the blob data for these file stream data types thank you for watching